annoys me is, is the lesbians and gays. Uh, that really gets up my back. Why? Because I'm totally against it. Um, it the, the way that they're getting the freedom and talking, this and that, it really annoys me. Why? Because I just totally disagree with it. You know, majority of people are normal, but when, when you get this... What, uh, Henry, hang on. What What is normal? Well, normal male and female is normal, and then you get these people coming in and spreading diseases, etc. Oh, now that is a stupid thing to say. So you're going to blame the entire gay community, male and female, for spreading diseases, are you? Well, no, I mean, that wasn't the subject I was going to talk about, actually, but I was listening earlier, and something it's not natural, you know. Uh, do you, are you, do you have children? Uh, yes, I do, yeah. How old are they? Uh, five. Yeah, and if, if that child, male, female, whatever, grows up to be gay, how, what, what will you do? I'd disown them. Oh, what a caring, loving father you are. Phone 01274 On the pulse. And like the man said, this is indeed the phone-in. On the pulse, I'm Alex Hall. We're on 01274 740 110. It's your chance to get it off your chest, to air any views you might have concerning what's going on in your town or on a larger scale in the world. Your chance to talk about anything that matters to you. We've been talking to Diane about how important or otherwise it is to lose your virginity. Her grandmother said to her that it would be as well to hang on to it till your wedding night, and if not, you'd have nothing to look forward to. Is that all you get married for, then? Just to have a quick bonk on your wedding night? I thought more than that, really. But still, asking the question, is it that important anymore? Uh, do you have... Are you surrounded by peer pressure to make you want to lose it? Also, we've been talking about battered wives and alcohol Give us a call if you have any thoughts on any of those subjects. And uh, Flo's next. Hello, Flo. Hello, Alex. It's just a quick... Uh, have you seen it in... I think it's in tonight's paper or last night, where uh, a lady found a condom in a tin of... Uh, it's in a tuna. Yeah. What a treat, eh? I, I hope don't they enjoyed think so. it for the tea. <laughs> well, the poor man, apparently, has got, got to have an HIV test. Has he? Yes, he's had an HIV test. Oh, poor man. Oh, I think it's awful. Yeah, it's a horrible thing, and it just makes you watch out whenever you open your tin. Flo, we're going to have to move on. I'll, ca I'll call you another night, though. All right, you take care of yeah. yourself now. You as well, I'm enjoying life. Oh, good, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Take okay. care. Bye-bye, Flo, bye. Right, Laura, hello. Hello. Hi. Well, I'm just ringing up, actually, because I'm frightened, really. What of? Well, my perpetrators are going to be out of prison very, very shortly. Sorry, what, what, what crime was this? Child abuse. Right, OK. A few months ago, I was told that they were going to get out on weekend release. Uh -huh. Now, I moved from my house, and now I'm living somewhere else. But that doesn't stop the abusers trying to find me. They've threatened no. my life and everything, and I'm frightened. Right. How long ago did this person go to prison? Uh, two and a half years ago. I'm so frightened. I just don't know what to do. We thought about moving, but I don't see why we should. I don't see why you should either. I was about 12 and a half. And I thought there was friends, and they abused me. And I said that I haven't to tell them anybody how they hurt me. And the second day, when I went up, because I still thought there were friends, I thought it wouldn't happen again. Um, it made me get undressed. Um, he really hurt me. Uh, two police officers, there was CID, they called at my home and said that um, could we go and get Hazel as the News of the World had obtained videos um, which showed clearly Hazel having sexual intercourse with said parties. This is how it actually all come to light in the end, when we all found out about it and the national newspaper told the story.
there'd been significantly more sexual abuse going on with Valvona and Idale, lesbian acts and other different sexual acts. They would drop her off outside or near to her home in walking distance so that she'd walk up home as if nothing had happened. And that went on all the time. I wanted to tell. He just frightened me so much and hurt me so, so badly. Some days I really wanted to tell, but I just couldn't. And it just wouldn't come out. The words just wouldn't come out. Now we're just stuck with the fact that Valvora and Idale are due to be sort of pre old in December. Um, it's a terrifying thought. Have you talked to the police about this person coming out? No, they're not good. Well, I really do think you need to get some help and I think you need to speak to a woman police officer. It's worth a try, isn't it? Anything's worth a try. Yeah. Will you keep in touch? I will. All right, thank you for thank calling. You. Good luck, Laura. Bye. Bye. This is The Pulse at three minutes to midnight. Mick. Hello, Alex. Hello, Mick. Um, I have a problem, and I don't know how to cope with it. Right. My daughter's, I think, is she's plucking up courage to ask me if it's all right if she goes on the pill. Right. How old is she? Um, she's going on 15. Right. She asked this friend of mine if she'd take her, mm -hmm. either to see the doctor or the family planning, and right. she was wondering how to approach me about it. Right, OK. I think she's possibly taking a sensible attitude towards it. She is. But... I don't agree with it, mm. um, but I don't know how to cope with it when she actually does tell me. Mm. I certainly think she is being sensible if there is... Um, does she have a boyfriend? Yes, and I'm wondering whether he's pressing her into it or not. Mm -hmm. Sex is evil, evil is a sin, sins are forgiven, so I get stuck in. I read that. My friend told me it. And we just enjoy writing on walls. But now I want my bedroom decorating now. But my dad's told me that. No, you're not having it done because you'll just write all over it again. I said, oh, I promise I won't. He goes, you will. Can't afford it anyway. <sighs> Every time I get a new boyfriend, it goes on work. A big mistake, though. And every time I go out with someone, I come straight in here and write all over the wall. <laughs> That's in my bedroom. <laughs> Mine's got a little bit of writing on it, but not as much as this. <clears throat> That's all we ever do, writing here. There's writing on dirt pictures as well. I've discussed them going on the pill. Well, I've never discussed sex with them or anything like that. Um, I suppose I should... Well, like... It, I should do, and I, and I know I should do, but it's easy to say that, but it's hard to do once it comes down to sitting down and talking to them. Um, as I say, I, I found, they probably wouldn't be embarrassed by it, but I would be. A lot. Hey, you some at me? I make the lad you some at. Mm. She, she don't need her. Shut up. We should keep her mouth shut there. Well, she hasn't had a chance yet because Lee's locked up. She wants she wants it first time to be with Lee. Don't you? Mm. <laughs> She's got a big mouth there. <laughs> We're only going out with him two weeks before he got locked up. He's in prison. In Wotherby Prison. I met him in November. Got off with him in November and he got locked up in November. may have an experience you want to talk about tonight, do call us. Have you lived with violence? Perhaps you're a man who's committed violence in the past. If you are, is there any hope? I mean, we 
got helpline numbers of an organisation that is there to help men who have been uh, actually the perpetrators of violence themselves. So clearly there is hope for them, there is work, there is counselling can be done to help them get rid of those elements of their personality. But if you're a fella who's been there, go on, be brave, call us and talk about it. And on the pulse now is Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Uh, hello. I was 100% faithful to my wife till she went out and did it to me. Right? Well, well actually, what did I? I came back from darts match early and caught my wife in bed with my best mate. Right. Right, so that sort of, like, kind of gets to you, doesn't it? I guess. Yeah, you know. Uh, but since then, uh, every female that I've got a chance, I have done it. Why? Why, to get revenge. Well, why is Pure, that getting purely, revenge? Purely revenge. Hang on, purely... hang on. Why, excuse me, I've missed a bit. Why is that getting revenge? Because uh, I believe that y your wife was sacred. You know, and, and I, I have now done it with uh, a few wives. You've done it with other men's wives? Yeah, on, purposely, just, just to get me on back. So you're quite happy to risk putting other people's marriages at stake because yours was because affected? Because somebody did to me. But that's... that's... That's evil, Kevin. Do they know they're being used in this way? Uh, well, as soon as I finish the deal, as soon as it's the end of the story, yes, they do. Well, why? I mean, well, how can you use people like that? Because I, I was used, wasn't I? But that's pathetic. You're yeah, absolutely but... pathetic. But, that, 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 but... but that's, you know, it's like a three-year-old yeah. saying, oh, you've done that to me, so I'm going to go and do this to you. Except you're toying with people's lives. You could break marriages. You could cause kids to be brought up without their parents. You, you just, you're messing with something that's so but... serious. Phone 01274 740 110. On the Colin. Yeah, hello, Alex. Hi. Yeah, um, how are you? All right. I'm all right, are you? Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Good. Uh, I'm shaking like a leaf here because of what I want to talk about, you know, about uh, domestic violence. Yeah. Um, just that you said earlier on, you know, you want people to ring up, you know, men to ring up, like that's been violent to other wives. So that's basically why I've rung up, you know. So what actually happened, Colin? If I'd have hit as hard as I could have done, I would have knocked her out, you know. Um, I used to sort of get angry with her and maybe sort of grab her hair, you know. So, uh, or punch her on the arm. I never, I only ever once hit her in the face, and we'd been married about six years, and that would just sum it on spur at moment. I just got up and hit her, you know, before I, before I realised what I'd done, you know. I never used to beat her up or out, you know, and I didn't want my son to pick all this up as he got older. Oh, your dad this, and your dad that, and your dad other, you know. And I'm sort of, I've, I've sort of thought of my son, he's nine years old now. Um, well, it'll be 10 this year in August now, so I think he's better off not seeing me, you know, until such time when his, his character is formed, you know, and I'm not going to be able to influence him, you know, either by my actions or by what he's heard that I've done, you know. I hope he's, he never ends up like me. So, I, I wanted to bring my kids up how I haven't been brought up, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't know how to do it properly, and I don't think I got a chance to do it properly either, you know. His son, when he were, when he, were, he, he learnt to walk kicking a football, and he were good at football. And last time I had any contact with him, he was sort of three, nearly four year old, and he could he he played football and cricket better than what I ever could. And yet, the memory that sticks out most about him is I smacked him one night, and he just turned and said, "I thought you were my friend, Daddy, you know." And I, that makes me want to cry. When I, whenever I think of that, you know, it makes me want. I'm ashamed of himself. Look. I don't know how you feel about this, but there's an organisation in Wakefield, right? Yeah. And it's for men who have committed violence. Yeah. Right? And how it's sort of partly to do with learning to control your anger and talking about why you did it and, and helping you come to terms with what's happened. Yeah. If I give you the number, would you give them a ring? Well, I haven't got a pen on me. I'm in a car box, you know. I'm All right, OK. Well, listen, um... I will get this number to you somehow or other. Yeah. Okay, sure. thanks, Colin. Thanks. Okay, uh, well, I don't know how you feel, but I, I think it's, for me, it was very interesting to hear from Colin there uh, about, you know, what goes on in the mind of somebody who does do that. Because, you know, we all say, oh, by God, if he raised his hand to me, I'd be off there. That would be the end of it. But it's just interesting to hear what happened to him and his story. Let's hear from you. We're on 01274 740 You're listening to The Pulse. Right, uh, Julie is next on the pulse. Hello, Julie. Pardon? Is that Julie? Yes, it is. Hello, Julie. Hi. 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 
Yes, hi again. Well, people have been ringing me for the past three or four, uh, 24 hours sort of thing. What are we calling for? Hello? Sorry, Julie, I, d I don't know what you're talking about. Well, who are you? This is the Pulse phoning. Oh, right. Um, I forgot what I called in about now. Hang on, I'll find out. OK. Roll, what did this lady call in about? She's forgotten. Domestic violence, apparently, Julie. Oh, right, right. What was the uh, argument about? Well, we weren't having any argument. We were just loosely discussing, discussing it. the subject, yeah. Right. So what was the uh, query? Uh, there wasn't actually one. You called us to talk about domestic violence. Have you been a victim of it? Oh, yes, I have. Right. How did it happen? Well, I got beaten up. <laughs> uh-huh. And why did you get beaten up? Probably because I said the wrong thing. keeping a diary because about a few years later I can look back and see what, how much fun I had and stuff and then um, but I don't like it when my dad reads it all the time so I have to hide it. I write stuff like I'm missing Greenie and Boo Boo and Gareth came over today and stuff. But it's just fun keeping a diary. I've not really, I've read a little bit of it but not much and I don't think she wants me to either. Um, I'd like to get all of it and have a proper look through it. No, I don't think... No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Stuff like... Went with my... Went with boyfriend. Or stuff like took, took an acid tab. Or had a smoke and stuff like that. I don't like him reading that. A lot of lassies write diaries. I thought, well, she might have written... Um, where she's been going and it might give me an idea where to start and look for her. And that's the only time I've looked, and then I only looked at sort of like basically two entries in it. Uh, but having said that, that caused a bit of arguments, did that? A bit of trouble. Trouble looking at it. Last time I found him re reading it, I went mad with him. I told him that I didn't want him reading it again. And he just says, well, I needed to know where you were. Like when I run away a couple of weeks ago, he was reading me, he talked to him, I find my diary so I know where I was. And I said, it's a good job you didn't read my diary. He says, why? I says, because it's not to do with you, my diary. Today, I feel really unwell and dirty. I went in the bath twice, but still didn't feel any better. It took 18 months of counselling for Hazel to get to the stage where she actually could confide and say what all the abuse that she had been through. And she actually wrote a diary which I was sort of given once, maybe every, every month, and said, Mum, just read this, and then you'll understand more. And reading that diary was really distressing, it was really heartbreaking. I just want to know why I'm like I am and why I'm feeling dirty all the time. All I can visualise is him coming towards me with a gun and it seems so realistic. I just stay awake night after night, making sh every noise that I hear in the flat, it gets me so frightened. At one stage, I was sleeping with a knife under my pillow because I was so frightened. Half the time I wake up feeling sick, it's quite often I throw up when I wake up because I feel so sick, I've been bad nightmares. Just can't sleep, so I'm forcing myself to stay awake. So I'm that drained that I just can't do anything. I can't be bothered to make anything to eat. I can't be bothered to do anything. Half that time, I can't be bothered to get up because uh, sometimes I feel as though there's no point of getting up. I wish I'd die in my sleep.
Look, I don't know how you feel about this, Colin, but there's an organisation in Wakefield, right? Yeah. And it's for men who have committed violence. Yeah. If I give you the number, would you give them a ring? Would you give them a ring? Ring. ring. I've explained how things go to, to Colin and, and suggested that, you know, he may not feel able to sort of contribute, if you like, tonight. When I was married and I had kids of my own, I said, I'm not going to bring him up in the same environment that I was brought up in, but it creeps up on you, you know. <clears throat> it's like a vicious circle. Um, it got to the stage where my ten-month-old daughter got caught up in the, in the violence. I didn't trust my own parents, you know. I don't trust my family, I don't trust my ex-wife when I was married to her, I don't trust anybody at all, you know. Um, I started hitting my partner. When I was younger, my dad used to check us out and he used to humiliate us on purpose make you feel embarrassed about everything, you know. I was scared of going on buses upstairs when I was a kid, I don't know why, but my dad used to laugh at me, you know. He'd carry my younger sister upstairs on bus, and when I was terrified, he used to laugh, you know. Things like that. I've just never felt safe anywhere at all, you know. Really? Most of them guys that were there didn't seem to be... They just seemed to be there somewhere to go, you know. Plus, like, the one that was sat nearest to me, he just seemed to be talking a lot of crap, you know. I pinned it to a wall. You pinned her to a wall to tell her how much she um, Well, yeah, I mean... It started about 25 to 8, and I thought, after about 5 or 10 minutes, I thought, what am I doing here? My three-year prison sentence went faster than this. Um, I mean, I had to... Since I've been there, I don't know whether or not I'm going to benefit from it, you know what I mean? I can't see yet how I'm gonna, exactly how I'm going to benefit, you know? Because I don't know if I can relate properly to other people out there or not, you know? I love you, and why can't you see it? I can think, well, yeah, I've been denied this and that and other from my parents, you know, uh, affection and an encouragement and everything else, but at the end of the day, I've still got the problems that I've got, you know, and I still don't know what to do about them, you know. So, <clears throat> it's like a vicious circle. And Flo. Hello, Flo. Hello, Alex. Nice to have you back, Flo. Thank you. It's nice to be back as well. I'm sure it is. Have you had any wasps on your holidays? No, I haven't seen a wasp. In fact, I haven't seen any insects. I saw a couple of ants one day. Oh. But, I've, but that was in a, you know, it was in a garden. So Believe it wasn't... me, you, Alex, I think you've had another of my nine lives. Oh, ick. With wasps. Last week, I was sitting in my garden having afternoon tea. And I had my cup on the little table and I just picked the cup up. Took a big gulp, and believe me, you, I had the biggest wasp in my mouth. Oh! Oh, and I just opened my mouth and spat out right quickly, and there it was wriggling on the floor. Oh, I came indoors and washed my mouth out with some disinfectant. It was horrible. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Boy and Barrel, and our sing along. And I hope you're all going to have a good night and get plenty of up into you because it's good for trade. <laughs> because I am having a few barley wines to get me going. <laughs> but not too many, I don't want to fall off floor. No. Okay, do. No, right. Why is my heart so light? Why are the stars so bright? Why is the sky so blue? Cynthia, I met you. I live for uh, music and, and singing and dancing. It's that that got me out. I didn't go out for a long, long time after my hubby died. My son used to say to me, if you don't soon go out of here, you'll be in the box. So I got my lad rags on. receiving counselling from the uh, local drug and alcohol abuse yeah. centre and it doesn't seem to be doing much good and I just wondered if there was anything you could advise or any of your listeners because I'm one of these drinkers that drinks a lot socially yeah. but enjoys it as well and if I didn't 
I'm scared that I wouldn't have a social life, but I enjoy it. OK, if it doesn't it's affect you harm. and you enjoy it, why, why are you getting counselling, then? It's doing me harm. Physically? Yes. In what way? In the way of uh, cirrhosis of the liver. Right. At 25, that is something to be worried about. Well, it is. Yeah. If only you sounded more worried. Um, how much are you drinking a day? Uh, well, it depends. In excess of a couple of bottles of vodka some days, or when I'm on a lager, that sort of thing, you know. How much lager? 15 to 20 pints. Well, today I've been drinking Newcastle Brown, and I'm on... I've just sort of done... I think I'm on my second crate now. I'm drinking Newcastle Brown because uh, the doctor recommended it. I don't like it, so he thought I'd drink less. But after about a month on it, I'm getting used to it. I quite like it now, so maybe it hasn't worked. I had ambitions. Yeah, I got, well, I got six O levels and three A levels from school. I applied to join the RAF when I was what, 17, 18. Which didn't work out due to the drinking, to be honest. I suppose that was my one ambition, and after that, I thought, well, what is the left? Just enjoy yourself, I think. When I was young, people, the, the idea of your life would be to go out to work, get married, have children, buy a house, buy a car. You know, and that's our thing. Just the simple things. And nowadays it seems, unless you're very lucky, most of that's beyond you. So somewhere along the line you've got to stop thinking about that and just do whatever you do to live, just to get through day to day. Well, I've been on the sick, unable to work since about 1991. When I first went on the sick, it was for many reasons, but one of them happened to be the fact that I didn't get out of the bed for three or four weeks. I'm a depressive, so they can't cure it, although I've had the tell police and everything else. As long as you're drunk, you don't feel it, so what's the point? I get slightly more money than everybody else does, so I consider myself slightly lucky to be on the sick. I'm, an, I'm a night person. The daytime's a threatening thing. Right, uh, Camille, I think, is next. Hello, Camille. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. I was calling about Jim. Yeah. It, um, if he's drinking that amount of be beer and vodka, he's on his way. I think he'd be lucky if he gets another 15 years at that rate. Yeah. Uh, the reason I say that is because I did that. And I, ha I did drink an awful lot. Um, and I'm only giving the warning because, you know, now I can't walk. And how old are you? I'm 33. So did you go for any help when you realised it was oh, getting yes. out of yeah. control? I had liver function tests, everything. And they've given me um, until I'm 40. And, and, and it's I... one hell of a shock when somebody says that to you. So they say you've just got seven years? Yeah. Even though you've stopped drinking, yeah. there's no hope? No. Nope. Right. Toes don't work, right? Well, the feet don't work, so they're more or less, you know, naff. I can balance on them, but I can't actually use them. I mean, they don't look too... I don't think they look too heavy, but, you know. Um, And, you know, it's just waiting time, really. You know, I just have to... Uh, I have to rely on everybody else, which makes me feel really guilty, because it's my fault in the first place. 
How do you feel knowing? Well, you've just got to be brave, haven't you? Oh, yeah, I guess you have. I'm ringing about the young lad that's got a drink problem. Yeah, um, hasn't just he just? Two points. One, if he's not been working for so long, how can he drink 20 pints a day? Where does he get his money from? Which I sort of can't oh, That's a good point, yes. Where does he get... But the thing is, I mean, you know, I'm sure you know, if, if people are alcoholics, they will find the money oh, yeah. from somewhere. But that's not the main reason why I rung. I'm on six, so I get quite a bit extra. I get nearly 70. There's no way I can live on that. You, know, you, you, can't, you can't really afford to eat off it once you've got your bills to pay and everything else. I don't really know many people that do play it by the book. You, see, you just can't. You know, most are at least claiming and working part-time or something like that. Just for the simple fact they've got no choice. Oh, the scams of anything from saying you've lost your money and going down to get some more to, uh, you know, claiming in false names and that sort of thing. The average would be three or four claims, which would uh, up your benefit from, you know, £40 pound a week or so to three or four times that. It's impossible to get caught. Well, so it seems. I've never heard of anybody getting caught. I've heard of lots of people that do it, but never anybody actually getting caught doing it. People find an empty flat and then correspond that with a name that did live there, or another name that could claim benefit, and then claiming that name and wait for the post to come through the address that they've sent it to, and hopefully you get payment. Hello, Alex. Hello, Jimmy. You know, I've been listening to this, lad, and it's fair upset me. It has, honestly, love. It's really upset me. Well, it's upset you, Jimmy. Well, all, all this drinking and all this... You know, it, 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 it has upset me. Well, I'm, I'm, so, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry a, to hear that. Pardon? I'm sorry to hear that. I'm not a soft bloke. And it's me, uh, totally blind. I never go out nowhere. I don't drink, I don't smoke. And these people there throwing their lives away just for drink. I, I, I don't know. Oh, God, I don't know. Anyway, that's what I didn't want to ring about. I'm just going for a barley wine, darling. I don't spend all that time on myself. I haven't time to do, but uh, I like to look nice when I'm going out. And I mean, I put this on in ten minutes, brush my hair and put a bit of cream on, a bit tutti frutti there, and put a different rig out on every time I go. I must do us. I won't be able to wear them all before I pass this way. <laughs> I love clothes, though. I like being chatted up, but that's all. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> yeah, a month ago, I did get chatted up. Oh, he bought me a drink. He looked a nice, quiet chap, I thought. And I just said, oh, that night my uh, driver wasn't in that night. I said that when it got to quarter to 11, I'll have to go for my bus. The chap that brings me home isn't in tonight. he gone somewhere with his, well, his wife or something. He says, oh, where do you live? I said, oh, Edgerton. He says, oh, I live up that way. Uh, I'll give you a lift in my car. I said, oh, I don't go with strangers. I don't know you. So oh, you'll be all right. So I did get in his car and brought me home. Went into the kitchen, like a coffee. No, he wasn't bothered about a coffee. All he wanted was a kiss and a cuddle. Of course, that's all he did have was a kiss and a cuddle. So, will you be down there next week? I said, yes. So I told you, decent chap, no hanky-panky. So the following week, brought me home again. 
because he wanted Anki Panky, didn't he? So I told him to get on his bike. And I told Alex that on the air. She says, Flo, you didn't want Anki Panky. I said, no, I'd rather have peace of mind than sex, Alex. Yes, please come along. Please sit down. How are you? Hi. I understand from your dad's letter that you want to go on pill. Yeah. Right. Have you used pill before? No, no, never. And have you made love or you're going to make love? Or you're only... I've already made love. Okay. If you're making love, are, are you taking any precaution? No. No. So there is a chance of you getting pregnant, isn't it? Yeah, and I don't want to get pregnant. You don't want to get pregnant. That's... Do you want to go home and think over it and then come back, or do you want to decide now? Choice is yours. I want to go on it. You want to go on it, fine. I've been at doctors, and mm -hmm. doctors um, were just explaining things about the pill, and they put me on it. Right, and he explained all different kind of pills, so I just chose one of them. I don't know which one I chose, just chose one of them. <coughs> but he says I could go on three different ones, and one was an injection, three months. And then when I've opened the third packet of them, I've got to make an appointment again to go see the nurse for some tests or something. Mm -hmm. And one of those, I don't know what they're called, smear test or whatever it is. Not what I say. <laughs> if it's what you want to do, then fair enough. going on it in case, you know, I get, like, a boyfriend and, you know, he wants me to start sleeping with him, then I won't get pregnant. Yeah, but you, you, you go out with somebody, you shouldn't even be, to start with, you shouldn't even be thinking that way. Mm. Um, it should be something you should be thinking about if, if and when it becomes a serious relationship and not before. It. Yeah. Well, doctor says I will be insensible. Well, it is sensible. I'm not saying it isn't. Syrah, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. I think it was um, Monday night. Did you have a call about eating? Yes, yes. I'm really struggling at the moment with um, eating and, and not eating. And What kind of help are you getting? I'm not getting any because I'm, I'm, oh, I'm just really ashamed. But, I mean, it's like um, I hadn't eaten for two weeks until Tuesday. And on Tuesday I had the most horrendous, horrendous food binge ever. Look, I want you to realise what you're saying to me. I want you to realise that this is a problem and it does need help. Once I've made the decision to go, I drive to the shop in a trance. I wouldn't be in control at all. Um, and so I just grab everything and, you know, I go for, for the same things every time, but... Um, I find it difficult to choose between that flavour and that flavour. 
feel really panicky and really paranoid. People are looking at what's in my trolley and looking at me and um, looking at what I'm buying. Everything has to be packed in a certain bag. Most of the stuff will go in the boot, but there'll usually be one bag at the side of me in the car that will get it um, eaten on the way home. Once it's all unpacked, I open everything up and, um, and then I cut it into sort of equal sized portions. Um, everything has to be an equal sized portion. I get a bin bag and all the packaging goes in the bin bag. Uh, on the floor and then uh, I sit on the floor and, and uh, eat everything. I start off with something dark coloured like um, blackcurrant or sometimes chocolate um, and then I'll have um, ice cream, yoghurt um, that sort of stuff. Then I'll have some more chocolatey stuff and then I usually finish with ice cream. It has to be um, half an hour from beginning to end because uh, after half an hour I, I feel like that um, I'll start digesting, just digesting the first things I ate, um, which, which wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be acceptable. So um, at the end of half an hour I'll have colour coded everything so I know that um, when I've got when I'm uh, vomiting I know when I've got to the first thing that I ate and. Uh, as long as it's not longer than half an hour, like, usually, this is what happens. I phoned, I phoned the number that Alex gave me, and they said, well, you know, we think you need some help with this. It's just, it's just really scary, um, because they're going to make me eat regularly, and I just, I just can't face that. The Alex Hall phone in. Now, have your say. The Pulse. We spoke this morning on the telephone and you said you got some concerns about Terry coming out, so I'm here this afternoon to see what, you, what your concerns are. Well, we've got plenty of concerns, obviously. I mean, we're getting more worried. We know what a dangerous man he is, and therefore, we're very frightened. Well, look, from the point of view of being at home and, and protection at home, we can offer you uh, a mobile telephone, it's called a Vodafone SafeLink. So if you had any problems at home, you've got direct contact with the police who can, will obviously be aware that you've got the phone and they'll come straight round. Would we be able to carry it outside? Uh, not the ones that we currently have, no, they're too, they're too bulky really. They're designed for you at home. What sort of protection would we get for outside? Well, that's, that is very difficult because obviously we can't have a police officer with you all the time. We can give you crime prevention advice on when you're out and about on your own, and not to be out and about on your own, but to go Does out that mean we've got to stay in for the rest of us lives? No. We, we've done that wrong. No, no. People don't think he's a violent man, but I know what he did to me. I know that he shot at me. I know he set his dogs on me. If that's not violent, I don't know what is. And I'm frightened of going out my door, and I shouldn't have to be. When he comes out, hopefully, if he will, if he's on licence, the will to regulate where he lives. Yeah, but can you keep a tab on him 24 hours a day? Well, I don't think they can keep a tab on him, no, but that, that would be the probation service who are responsible for where and when he lives and where yeah, he Yeah, they see him once a week. He's been a good boy. He's allowed out. He's not going to abuse any more kids. But that's not true. I can't answer that one, Hazel, can I? We'll have to wait. Unfortunately, it is a solid state, but we'd have to wait and see what happened when he came out. Mm. I mean, if things got really bad, we have a facility where we can assist you with the rehousing. Yeah, but why should we have to move? You can run all the time, but you can't hide, Graham. No. And why should We've we move? We haven't done no wrong here. Well, We're the victims. The reality of it all is that Hazel now has to live with it for the rest of her life. She hasn't had a childhood. Everything good has been taken away from her. How can anybody give her that back? It scares me to death of being in 
the same room as the man without somebody else being with me. I mean, I should be out going out night clubbing and that but it's made me so feeling frightened and terrified, not sleeping at night, that I just can't do anything anymore. And this is Joseph. Hello, Joseph. No, you're Joseph. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm Alex. Right, Alex. Uh, I'm okay. A, it's a bit nervous, you see. Uh, it's about this woman who's been coming on strong with me, and she works for me. It's a secretary, apparently. I've just been married the last three weeks. I got married three weeks ago. Yeah. And they see, she's that sort of thing, but she's very ugly. And everyone at work likes this secretary. She, could, she keeps on... Hang on, who's very ugly? The wife. Well, that's a lovely thing to say. You've been married three weeks yep. and you think your wife's very ugly. Well, she's got a very good personality, you see. And the thing, I, I love her and everything, yeah, but the second... It, but if you love her that much, you shouldn't you shouldn't even think for a second that she's very ugly. Well, it looks like I've got everything to do with it. The thing is... <laughs> the thing, what? Are you, honestly? I mean, when you're in love well, with somebody, I'm, I'm, you, well, you think they're beautiful. The secretary at work keeps on coming on strong to me. And what are you going to do? That's what I'm, I'm just. I'm, I'm in at work. I mean, I'm stuck now. I don't know if I'm coming or going. I think so, what, what are you saying it. to me? Are you saying to me that you should go and have it off with the secretary because she's better no, looking than your wife? No, I'm not saying that was a fair. I think I should call the marriage off and then see how it. You think I should see how it goes with this? You think you should call it? Joseph? Are you half witted, lad? What are you saying to me? If I hadn't played the old rugged cross and the Lord is my shepherd uh, before Alex comes on, I get up and play it, call in the bathroom, make a cup of tea, and I play it every night, those two children, for my late husband, because I had, a, I had them for his funeral, and I always remember saying to the organ teacher, I want to learn these two children. I know it's sad, but um, I had it for my husband's funeral, and I want to learn them so that I can play them without music. And, and which I do every night, every night, I never miss. First of all, I, I have something to say which is, is very sad and it's not very often we hear of this sort of thing and I, I do just think it's worth mentioning uh, at this time, you may well have heard of uh, a young woman called Camille who called us a few times uh, and I'm sorry to say that Camille died last Friday morning in the early hours of the morning. Uh, she leaves behind a fiancé, a son and a family who were devastated at her loss. She was only 32. She did ring us uh, from time to time and I know a lot of people would be concerned for her so I do feel it's important that I should mention that. Uh, Camille's family, uh, Camille's fiancé, Paul, has asked me to mention the details of I suppose it got to the stage where I'm not worried about it killing me. The only thing that does worry me is maybe it causes a bit of pain. They say it's a long, slow death once you get there, which is what my counsellor's been trying to tell me. But what I try to point out to him is you can't see that. You can't see your own liver rotting away. However much you try, there's no way you can do that. It's just a very strange sensation to think that you... People say, maybe you're killing yourself. I think, well, I feel fine. I'm happy. Right, uh, we move on now to Sheila. Hello, Sheila. Hello. Hello. Uh, I've spoken to you before about my lesbian twin daughter. So tonight I wanted to 
have a few words about this, Henry. Right. Right, I've never known such a narrow-minded, bigoted prat, quite honestly, as Henry. Now, don't mince words. I'm not. <laughs> I cannot believe this guy. I cannot believe this guy. There was still... Well, I can, actually. But he was so... He was so sort of bombastic about it. I mean, for God's sake, there are heterosexual practices that probably make uh, gay people sick. The point is, you get on with it. It's each to their own, and as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else, then that is your time.